Would you believe me if I told you that this monster cannot bite or even eat? Megaloptera teaches us that looks aren't always as they seem, especially in the insect world. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today we are talking about the order Megaloptera, containing the alder flies, the dobson flies, and the fish flies. This is the second of three orders in the Neuropterida, containing the Neuroptera, the Megaloptera, and the Raphidioptera. You might be able to break down the name Megaloptera on your own, but let's go over it anyway. Mega means large or great, and Terra means wing. So Megaloptera means large winged, or great winged, which I personally think sounds cooler. And when you look at the giants of this order, such as this Dobson fly, this name makes a lot of sense. But not all Megaloptera are large. I mean, look at this little alder fly. It still kind of lives up to its name. Compared to its body size, its wings are still fairly large. Perhaps I'm reaching. Ironically, these large wings can make them pretty clumsy flyers. They're still capable of flying decent distances, they just don't always look very coordinated when they're doing so. Overall, Megalopterans have elongate bodies, chewing mouth parts, prominent antennae, and well-developed compound eyes. Perhaps more notable is that their wings are often darkly colored, or at least have dark patches, giving them a chic neo-gothic aesthetic. The Megaloptera are holometabolous, meaning they have a complete four-stage metamorphosis from egg to larvae to pupae to adult. The Megaloptera lay their eggs on plants or rocks that are close to water, as their larvae are aquatic. When the larvae hatch, they drop down into the water and they begin hunting small aquatic insects, worms, and crustaceans. You can normally find them taking shelter in rock crevices, or in some cases, burrowed in aquatic sediment. They can look a bit terrifying, and you'll sometimes hear them referred to as Helgramites, uh, but we don't really know where this name came from. They do look a little hellish, and they can bite, so I guess it's fitting. The protrusions lining their abdomen are not legs, but rather this is where you find their gills. Okay, pause. So I say gills, but few Megaloptera have conventional gills. Some do, but those that don't often rely on cuticular respiration, where oxygen and other gases diffuse directly through the body wall. And those abdominal filaments have a thinner integument to absorb O2 easier. So when I say gills, just replace it with all that. Okay, unpause. They prefer moving water, as it makes it easier for their gills to pick up sufficient oxygen. However, some species can make do in lower oxygen environments by using a siphon on their abdomen to intake oxygen like a snorkel. Megaloptera can take years to reach maturity, and if they're lucky enough to make it through their larval stage without being eaten by a fish, they'll crawl out of the water onto shore, burrow into the soil or crawl under debris, and pupate and then in a few weeks, they'll emerge as full-fledged adults. And after this long larval development, they get a whole week to mate and lay their eggs. Yes, you heard me correctly. Though their overall lifespan is multiple years, once they're an adult, they only live for a few days to a week. Their only real job is just to mate and lay eggs. The adults usually don't even eat, maybe some nectar at best. So these giant mandibles that you see on male Dobson flies are not used for impaling prey. They're actually used for holding the female while mating. Because of the awkward size of these mandibles, male Dobson flies actually can't even bite. Uh, the females are actually the biters, so handle with care. They're not venomous or anything though, and they're usually only going to bite you if you're grabbing at it. There aren't really any situations in which Megalopterans are a pest, but there are plenty of situations in which they're an ally. Megaloptera are an important part of the aquatic food web, both as an efficient predator and as a tasty treat for a lot of fish. Many anglers will use lures that imitate Helgramites, and a ton of trout, bass, and more will happily gobble them up. Megalopterans can also be important water quality indicators, Many species have a low pollution tolerance, so their presence can tell us a lot about the water they're found in. 
However, this low pollution tolerance is a double-edged sword. The combination of a long life cycle and a low tolerance of pollutants makes navigating our modern world a tricky business for many megalopterans. One way you can help conserve megaloptera is by helping to keep your nearby waterways clean and free of pollution. Try to limit your chemical spraying and avoid excess fertilization, especially if you live near water, as the runoff can greatly reduce water quality. Also, allow and embrace vegetation growing near the stream bank. Not only does this help filter runoff, but it also helps stabilize the soil. If too much soil is being eroded into the water, many invertebrates won't be able to tolerate the increased sediment load. Since they hide out under rocks, try not to greatly disturb the structure of the stream. Taking large stones out of the water and stacking them on top of each other may look cool, but it hurts the invertebrate community by removing the crevices in which they take shelter. Like Neuroptera, Megaloptera also are attracted to lights. So remember to turn your porch light off when you're not using it so they don't waste too much time and energy worshiping the orb. However, if you want to find a Megalopteran, checking around external lights near water bodies isn't a bad place to start. You wouldn't believe how many cool insects I've found just sitting at gas station lights at night. You can also find the larvae in streams with good water flow by simply checking under submerged rocks. Just remember to place the rock back exactly where you found it. However, finding a Megalopteran larvae isn't always easy, so definitely consider yourself lucky if you come across them. And if you see an adult Megalopteran, take a moment to appreciate the opportunity, because you managed to find it during that one week window of its multi-year life. A lot has led it to that one moment. Thank you so much for listening, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future orders. Also, if you have any favorite species from this group, or if you have any other fun Megaloptera facts I didn't cover, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. Peace, y'all.